Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to go ahead and take a look at creating these custom three-dimensional kind of drop shadows in Photoshop. We're going to cover just like the very, very basics of using the drop shadow, and then we're going to have some fun with it and create these kind of other custom drop shadows. This is another tutorial in the continued series of tutorials that Howard from Iceflow Studios and I are doing on web elements. And you can check out the inspiration for this tutorial over at 365psd.com and I will probably have a link to the exact inspiration in the description of this video. Also, there's going to be a download for this file right here, which is what we're going to start with, in the link or down in the description to the video. There's going to be a link to this. So you can go grab this, download it, and follow right along using the exact file that I'm using. I'm going to bring the Photoshop interface back and we're going to begin by just adding a simple shadow to the image over here off to the left. So that's down here. We've got box one, image one. And what I've got set up are a series of images being clipped to just these square shapes beneath them. So the first image is being clipped to this square shape, which means we're going to add the layer styles to the shape that the image is being clipped to. So that sort of the holder of the image is going to get the drop shadow and is getting the little stroke and the, the glow across the top and all that good stuff. So let's add a drop shadow. We're going to go very basic, layer, layer style drop shadow. If you've used Photoshop for any period of time, you've probably already done this, but just for those of you that might be newer, we're just going to run over it very, very quickly. We've got a blend mode here. Typically, if you work with normal blend mode, everything's going to be pretty predictable. So blend, blend mode normal is a good one to start with. You can choose a different color if you like for your shadow. In this case, shadows usually are darker, so we're going to stick with black. And we can go ahead and just reduce the opacity of this shadow. So let's knock it down to about 35%, something like that. And that's going to make it much less visible. We're going to leave the distance at 5, and we're going to set the size to 8. Now, other than the blend mode, the color, and the opacity, the two important things here are angle, or the three important things I should say, are angle, distance, and size. The angle is essentially the position of the sun. If you imagine the sun beating down on something, it's going to cast a shadow. Well. The angle is sort of where the sun starts out. So if we set 90 degrees, the sun will be straight ahead. You can see the shadow being or straight above. So therefore, the shadow is going to be straight beneath our object. If you change it to a different angle, that's going to change. Now, I've got it set to use global light here in this document because global light has been defined as 90 uh, degrees. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. Don't get hung up on it. It's no big deal. Um, but just know that it might not usually show up as 90 degrees, uh, your default. Uh, distance is essentially the the distance, uh, how far away from the shape is my drop shadow going to be. Again, we're going to leave that at about 5. And the size is simply the blur. The more size, the more blur your drop shadow is going to be to the point of not even being able to recognize that it's a drop shadow. So we're going to set that to about 8 pixels again. Go ahead and hit OK. So that's pretty much the long and short of using the simple drop shadow. It's a very, very quick effect, very quick and easy to use in Photoshop. It takes you a second to get used to it, and you'll be using it uh, for a long time. After that, for those of you that know how to use the drop shadow, we want to create a slightly more complex drop shadows. And we can do this a number of ways, but I want to do it in a way that allows me to edit this drop shadow later on. We want to use a layer style. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a shape that is kind of the shape of the drop shadow we want and apply the drop shadow to that shape. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select image two, which is the center image. All right, I just selected that layer and I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to set the rectangle to draw shape layers and I'm going to make sure that there's no style attached to the layer and the fill color of white is just fine. Now I'm going to draw out a nice rectangle which almost covers my entire center image. Something like so. It doesn't need to be exactly that, but something about what I've got there should work just fine. Then what we want to do is grab the pen tool, but click and hold on the pen tool and go down to the convert point tool. With the convert point tool, we're going to select our path, so it's going to highlight the path, and then we're going to select just this bottom right corner, the bottom right anchor handle. I'm going to hold down my Alt key, that'd be Option on the Mac, and I'm just going to pull out a tangent handle up toward the center of our square. I'm just going to make it a very subtle uh, bow, like so. So just a nice little curve or bow in the bottom of our square. What I'm going to do now is grab my Move tool, and I'm just going to nudge this downward a couple with my down arrow key. The thing I want to watch for, I don't want this to hang out over the edge of the image at all. That's for the shadow to do. So once we've made sure we've got this nice and low, we're going to apply a shadow to the shape, shape one. We're going to go layer, layer style drop shadow. And don't worry, we're going to drag it beneath our image in just a second. I just want to see exactly uh, you know, how my shape is behaving. Once I think I've got the drop shadow I want, then I'll adjust. So we're going to reduce the opacity to about 35% like we did with our other drop shadow. And we're going to increase the distance to about, let's go for 10 pixels maybe, something like that looks cool. And we'll increase the size to about 10 as well. And let's actually set the distance of 15. Let's add a little bit more distance to that. There we go. Something like that looks pretty cool. Hit OK. 
And all we need to do now is drag this shape beneath the box two layer. The box two layer is the container holding our center image. So drag it all the way down below that. And you can see our white box disappears and we're left with this kind of cool little drop shadow, which makes it look like our image is peeling up away on the edges, up away off of the background that way. So that's one type of shadow, very cool. And we can always edit this. We can either come in here and edit the actual path, okay, and sort of change the, the, the bow or the curve on the path like so. Or we can edit the blur and the distance of the drop shadow by coming in here to drop shadow and just editing the distance or the size. So let's now choose image three and create one more shape. So rectangle tool, again, make sure we don't have any style associated with the shape. We're drawing a shape layer. Color of white works just fine. So go ahead and draw a nice large shape. Actually make this one a little bit smaller than the other one because we need room to kind of bump it down a little bit. You'll see what I mean in a second. Grab that convert point tool again and select again the bottom right corner, holding down my Alt key. I'm going to pull down this way now because I want to create sort of a bump coming down off of my shape, like so. Grab the Move tool and nudge this guy down until it's right about at the bottom of our image shape. And we're going to apply a drop shadow to this. Let's go Layer, Layer Style Drop Shadow. Now, again, everything is pretty much going to stay the same. We're going to set the opacity to 35% again. And let's increase the distance a little bit. Let's increase to about 10. And again, we'll increase the size to about 15. See what we got. Uh, that's actually a little bit too much. Let's reduce this distance to about five. Let's see what we got here. Hit OK. And we're going to really get a good idea of what this looks like when we drag this beneath the box. So we're just going to drag it below box three there. And you can see a nice little uh, three-dimensional shadow. In this case, almost indicating that our image is bending up in the center. So the edges are staying pressed against the table, sort of. And we're getting this cool three-dimensional shadow from the center. Now, you can even increase the way uh, this effect, or the three-dimensionality, if you will, of this effect, if you apply a little bit of an effect to your image itself. So let's just try it with this image three here. Let's go layer, layer style, gradient overlay. And you can see we're just covering it with a gradient. Don't worry about that. We're going to set the angle to zero. So it's going to run linearly left to right. And we're going to set the style to reflected. So it's going to sort of start as black in the middle, white on the outside. We actually want white on the inside because if it's curving up in the center, it, the highlight's probably going to touch the center of the photograph first. So we're going to tick on reverse. And I'm going to set this to a blend mode of, let's try overlay. That's a little too intense. Let's go with soft light and then just reduce the opacity a bit. So you can see there's before, there's after. It just adds just a touch of three-dimensional-ness to the image. I don't know, just a fun little thing to try. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and just add a little shine across all these guys just to really finish them off nicely. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again. And I'm just going to draw out a nice big rectangle right up here. And I'm going to hit Command or Control T to bring up Free Transform. I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just rotate it one click. That's negative 15 degrees if you're looking up here in the Tool Options bar. Commit those changes, grab the Move tool, and let's try to center it up as best as we can over our first image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Command or Control click Box 1, the Box 1 layer. Command or Control click that layer thumbnail to load it as a selection. I still have the Shape 3 layer selected. And I'm going to go Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal Selection. There we go, very cool. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of this guy to, let's try 25%. And maybe a little too intense. Let's go with 20%. There we go. And what we're going to do at this point is just duplicate this layer. So Commander Control J, duplicate it twice actually. And I'm going to get rid of my layer masks. We need to move these two layer masks so that they're over here on these images. So for now, let's just fill these with black. So select this layer mask. Foreground color is set to black. I just hit the letter D and then the letter X. Alt, backspace, option, return, fill it with black. Select the other mask. Alt, backspace, option, delete, we'll fill it with black. There we go. Now what I want to do is I'm going to select the center shine, and I'm going to control click box two. All right, it's going to load it as a selection. I've got my move tool selected, and we're just going to set to align the vertical centers. It's going to knock that shape right over into place. And then we're going to control click box three, the box three layer thumbnail. I'm going to select my top shape here and align that to the vertical centers. There we go, cool. So now all we have to do is load these two shapes as a selection. So I'm going to load box two first as a selection. Select the shape or the shine for box two, which is right here, this, this middle guy. Whoa, wrong dock that I'm expanding. This guy right here. And we're going to select that layer mask and just hit Command or Control I. It's just going to invert the colors, which in this case is black, so we want to make it white. Great. Command or Control D to deselect. And select the top shape. Command or Control click box three, the layer thumbnail. Select the layer mask for our top shape. Command or Control I again to invert. Black to white, there we go. And you can see, just like that, 
we've created this cool little series of images with three different drop shadows. And the cool thing about these drop shadows in particular is they're a little bit different, very easy to use, very easy to create, fast to create, and easy to edit later on as well. So that's it for this one. I hope you learned a thing or two. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for hanging out and doing this tutorial with me. Make sure you go like the Tutvid Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash tutvidfan. And follow me on Twitter at tutvid. Thanks, guys.